Now we are looking at soil stacks. At the end of this part of the session, I want you all to be able to recognise the four main stacks from their diagrams, state the maximum pipe lengths, clip distances and maximum and minimum falls, and describe the termination requirements of stacks. So before we start, it's worth noting that discharge pipes don't always discharge into soil stacks. Sometimes they might discharge into a full water gully like you can see above here. And the key thing to note that if they do discharge into a gully, they should project through the grill, but they must discharge above the water level in the gully. So essentially the reason why it has to go through the, the grill is so that any sort of hair or, or other materials that might um, travel through the pipe don't get caught on the gully grill and, and sort of start to cause a blockage and cause things to spill out over and make a mess. Okay, so we're going to look now at the stacks. There's four main stack systems, primary ventilated stack, secondary ventilated stack, primary branch uh, discharge stacks and stub stacks. Some similarities between all of the stack systems, um, essentially the, the terminology is going to be the same. You're going to call the, the, the bits that are similar the same thing essentially, which we're going to look at uh, soon. The clip distances will be the same, maximum and minimum falls are, are going to be the same. And there's risk of trap seal loss in all of the stack system types. Less, 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 less risk in some of the system types, but there's still a risk in, in all of the system types from, from some of the forms of traps you was. Um, all of the, the stack types will have a long radius bend fit at the base of the stack, and, and that allows the water to be easily discharged. The, the radius of the bend should be at least 200 millimetres, um, <clears throat> so it should have a nice, long, easy, easy bend at the bottom. Okay. Because of the risk of, of trap seal loss due to compression, uh, the specific heights at the lowest connection in relation to the bottom of, the, of this stack should be. In properties up to three storeys, so one, two or three storeys high, the lowest connection to the, to the base of the stack should be at least 450 mil up from that point, from the invert level of the, of the drain. Okay. If the building's over three storeys high, that's four or five storeys high, this distance should be increased to 750. If it's between five and ten storeys high, you shouldn't make any connections on the first floor, ground floor at all. Okay, so we'll actually look at what we mean by compression in, in the next part of the session. Okay, and also worth noting, you can see here at the base of the bend, the radius should be at least 200 millimetres. So maximum discharge pipe lengths. So on stacks without extra, extra ventilation, that's a primary ventilated and stub stacks, the, there's maximum distances that, that the pipe should run um, from the stack. And they need to be laid again to, to very specific falls as well. So for a four inch pipe or 110 mil pipe, it's a maximum of six metres run from the stack and the pipe should drop ideally actually at, at around 18 millimetres per, per metre, which is the minimum fall. But the maximum fall that you're allowed to have is 90 millimetres per metre. So that means for every metre it goes horizontally, it, uh, it can drop between 18 mil vertically and 90 mil vertically. Okay. For 40 mil pipe, the maximum distance that can be run from the stack without extra ventilation is three metres. And again, the falls are the same between 18 mil and 90 mil per metre. And for 32 mil pipe, the maximum distance it can run from a stack is 1.7 metres, which isn't very far. And again, this must fall between 18 and 45 mil per metre. Because it's a smaller bore pipe, um, it's more likely to discharge at full bore, especially if it's a, a steeper slant. So what we want to do is, with, particularly with, with our smaller pipe, the 30 dm, keep it at a very shallow, shallow angle, so it's less likely to discharge at full bore. And when it discharges at full bore, that's when we're most at risk from, from trap seal loss. Okay, so the clip distances for a sanitary pipe work is shown here. 32 mil and 40 mil are both the same, half a metre horizontal clip distance 
1.2 metres vertical clip distance. And for 110 mil, a nice easy one to remember, one metre horizontal clip distance or two metres vertical clip distance maximum. We also need to be aware of cross flow. Um, cross flow is essentially when you have uh, water flowing into a stack directly opposite each other. So two connections directly opposite each other, they can be subject to cross flow. That means that if the water from, from one appliance as it flows in could sort of affect the, the other appliance, it can, the, the water kind of, sort of pushes into the, the outlet potentially, which can cause pressure fluctuations, which can cause trap seal loss. Um, so to prevent cross flow, Wherever you have a, a 110 mil connection, you shouldn't connect anything within 200 millimetres directly opposite it. You can make connections in at the side, it's absolutely not a problem, just not anything within 200 mil directly opposite a 110 mil connection. A good way to <clears throat> ensure that you can make appropriate connections is by using a soil manifold. You can make a three or four connections into a soil manifold depending on what, what one you, you buy um, and the good thing about these is that they are <clears throat> the pipes are turned down into the soil manifold which means that they are they're not going to be subject to the, the issues that from cross flow if you have smaller diameter pipe uh, going into a stack then the, the Cross flow sizes are going to be a little bit different. For example, if you had a 32 mil or 40 mil pipe going into a three inch stack or an 82 mil stack, you'd have make no connections with a 90 mil opposite. Or if you had um, a 32 mil or 40 mil pipe going into a four inch stack, you wouldn't make any connection or a 110 mil stack, you wouldn't make any connection within a 110 mil directly opposite. Okay. Not come up in the test before, but it's worth being aware of. Okay, primary ventilated stack. So this is the the most simple and the most common um, stack that we're going to uh, fit, and it doesn't have any extra added ventilation. It's got a stack which goes a stack vent which goes up through the roof, but it doesn't have any other ventilation on top of that. So the traps of this on this stack are probably the ones that are going to be most susceptible to siphonage. And we're going to talk about what that means in the, like I say, in the next part of the session. And also the traps and appliances on the ground floor could be susceptible to trap seal loss through compression. Okay, and this is a primary ventilated stack and all of the pipes that come off it would be described as branch discharge pipes. And the bit the dry part of the stack, the bit above the, the highest inlet would be described as the stack vent or vent stack, people call it a different thing. And the wet part of the stack that the water flows through would be known as the main discharge stack. Okay. Secondary ventilated stack, a lot of it's, uh, the terminology is the same. You know, you've got the, the main vent there, you've got your branch discharge pipes coming off it and your main discharge stack which is the wet part of the stack and it also has a second stack to give extra ventilation which would be described as the secondary vent and this this can help uh, particularly if you've got issues with compression um because it, it allows just the water uh, the, the sorry the pressure um to be sort of pushed up through the secondary vent rather than potentially out through a trap seal Ventilated branch discharge systems, um, you can see an example of one here. Again, the terminology is pretty similar. You've got your branch pipes coming off the, the main stack. You've got your secondary vent running, running up alongside and your, uh, and your sort of uh, your main discharge stack, main vent, etc. But you also have branch ventilating pipes, which vent the discharge pipes, branch the branch discharge pipes, okay? So yeah, our branch ventilating pipes will, will ventilate the branch discharge pipes and they significantly reduce the likelihood of induced or, or self-siphonage. 
and we'll, we'll, we'll find out the reason for that when we look, when we find out about siphonage in the next part of the session. So we've looked at a number, all most of our main stacks, most of our main vented stacks, or all of our main vented stacks, um, and all of these would have a vent which goes out to the atmosphere. The, the minimum size of that vent could be 75 mil, even if it was a 110 mil pipe. Um, because only thing that its purpose is, is for is to allow air into and out of, of the stack. Okay, but it's worth noting because of the, it's going to be really quite stinky at the end of this pipe because it's letting out all of our sewer gases. So they must terminate either 900 mil above or three meters to the side of any openable window. Okay. As the stack passes through the roof, it would normally go through a slate piece uh, and would normally also glue a storm collar on the pipe immediately above this to stop rainwater dripping down the pipe. Uh, you'd prevent birds from nesting in there by fitting a bird cage, a sort of wire or mesh um, or plastic cage. And if it was in an area that was exposed to, to high winds, we might fit a vent kill, um, which sort of can, can prevent sort of waving out due to the wind blowing over the end of the pipe, which is another type of trap seal loss. Stub stacks, uh, it's the only type of stack that we're going to look at which doesn't vent to the outside. We have an air admittance valve fitted on it that allows air in, but it doesn't allow air out. Some of the key regulations, the floor level, uh, if you fit a stub stack, it uh, should be no more than 1.3 metres from the invert level of the bend. And to the centre of the WC where the, the WC outlet is, that should be no more than 1.5 metres from the invert level of the bend. So the base of the stack, essentially. The highest connection that we can make to a stub stack should be no more than two metres from the from the base of the stack, from the invert level of the bend. OK. Venting requirements for stub stacks. Worth noting that the air admittance valves need air, so don't box them in too tightly. You need to also make sure that there's there's appropriate access for maintenance as well. They should be fitted above the spillover level of the highest appliance. And, and it's recommended to have at least one stack that vents to the atmosphere for every six stacks on stub stacks on a run. Okay, now it is time for your task. <laughs> 